Greetings from Dr. B. This is our third video on reading. The first one was how to put letters together to make words. The second one was how to connect words to make sentences and thought. And the third one is the hardest one that you'll never master, but it's the most fun. This is the video about the most fun I have, and that's connecting thoughts and ideas from one source with thoughts and ideas from another source. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to give you a few ideas and uh, encourage you to spend time on this once you realize the importance. So let's take off our scientific jacket, put it aside, because this is not a scientific press a few knobs here, do a few things, and this is a result. This is suggestions of how to integrate thinking in your students to point them in the right way. So let's start off with books. I love books because I can take them, read something, go back and, and cross correlate with what's happening there. I don't like screens, but we're going to talk about screens in a few minutes because it's hard to go back, it's hard to underline, and it's hard to find a particular thought that you like unless you mark it some way, dog ear it, and underline it. Many of the time I've read something by, say, Bonhoeffer, and then a week or two later tried to find that quote, and I can't even remember which of Bonhoeffer's books it's in. How do we do that? Well, let me give you an example. Take screens. I don't like screens, and yet they're an integral part of your kids and your life. Learn. You have to learn how to control the screens. How? Start at an early age and help them understand that it's a tool and not a lifestyle. If you catch them before going into school, you've got a chance of teaching them what screens are for, how to use them. If they get into too far deep into it, 6th, 7th grade, and you realize the importance, the other students around them, their environment around them that they're getting in school, public or private, starting to shape. Oh, I've got to have my phone with me. I've got to have my screen. Pick the screens that they're going to be using. For instance, don't let them watch a movie of their choice. Sit down and make it a family affair. Find a movie that they like, preview it, and so you know what points that you want to bring it out. Let's take, for instance, a common movie was uh, Spider-Man. They love that movie. But look at the message and point out the message and help them draw out the message in that. He starts off learning about his power, but he doesn't know how to use it. And then he's put into a crisis and he's got to learn how to use it. That crisis actually shaped him as much as the power. How many movies can you find that have moral thoughts, moral reasoning in them? Well, any of the superheroes have got to have a villain and they've got to have a good guy. But you've got to free up as much time as possible. Where? For instance, around the dinner table. But you say, hold it. I have to work. It's a one-parent family. I can't. I have to send my student to public school. I can't afford private or the time for homeschool. What can I do? Simply ask the student to bring what is happening there. For instance, are they having trouble? They don't like reading the book. Ask them to tell, talk about why they don't like reading the book, or have them bring that copy back and look at it and see what's happening in the book. I admit I didn't like reading um, To Kill a Mockingbird at first, but I knew at the end what was going to happen after my parents uh, took me to see uh, the movie with Gregory Peck. Oh, this is interesting. This is good. This is evil. It's easy to pick them out. Find out what they're reading. If you can, have them bring the book home. They've got to and encourage them to read at home in small batches and, if necessary, read with them. Make comments. Ask for their opinion about what's happening here. What a purpose of that dinner table is to build the team up. 
What are they doing? What are you doing? What are the consequences that you're doing? And why? Or what things are you reading? Are you spending hours just watching television and each of us in a separate world? Find out what they're interested in. If they're interested in sports with a DVD player, you can take the sports and analyze it. What are the consequences of this play? How did it develop? And so forth. You can comment on these sports as well as a commentator. So it's a long process, but it's well worth it. Parenting is not a part-time job. Yes, there are some households in which only one parent is present. An example would be Ben Carson. His mother could not read, and yet he learned to read because she demanded book reports. He grew up knowing the importance of reading, and eventually he started connecting things from this source and that source together, and it became a brain surgeon. So grab your tablet. Do not consider it your enemy. Take command of their tablet so that they're watching and working on effects, games that have worth to them. Find out what games are on there and preclude spurious, uninteresting videos uh, and games. I have games on here that will range from a first grade to later helping him to encourage to think. Make use of that. Select books for them that you find interesting. If you're interested, I have one book on stemsherpa.com about imagination side by side. The reason it's side by side is this is designed for non-readers helping them to learn how to play games that you can participate with them in card games, Sudoku, logic games, working with the kid. But don't press it. We want them to start generating where they're enjoying it so much that they spontaneously pick up the book and work through the material. Again, the only reason I read crazy books like this is because I enjoy it. You've got to build that enjoyment and then encourage them to connect. Have fun because this is the most enjoyable part of raising kids is shaping them into not little yous, but people that are discerning and the critical thinkers. Thank you.